has contributed to this concept. And as we begin with the pilot uh, project in Nakuru County, we believe we are going to look for how we cooperate or incorporate other counties across the country. Hans Pake, Chairman of the Frederick Nauman Foundation for Freedom Vote, and Principal Secretary Rosaline Jogu, once again signing the same MOUs. We kindly request if the President of the Republic of Kenya could join us for the photo session. As an administration, Kenya is continuously becoming, as has been said ably, the Silicon Savannah, where technology and innovation and creativity is central to our development. You may want to remember that it is Kenya that introduced the mobile money transfer to the world through our M-Pesa innovation. That was not the only innovation in that technology space. There is more, and that is why this agreement today will benefit from the relationship between German technology and Kenyan talent. It will give us an opportunity for a win-win collaboration and partnership. And that is why I'm excited that today we are putting together German technology that is world renowned and Kenyan talent and innovation that stands out, not just in the global south, but globally. And therefore, it is a coming together of two aspects of two great nations to give us an opportunity to leverage on technology, to drive our manufacturing, to drive job creation, investment, and to create expanded opportunities for both German and Kenyan people and entrepreneurs. In the context of where we come from, Germany became the first country to recognize Kenya's independence. And therefore, there is a historic relationship and a firm foundation that has been built between Kenya and Germany. That relationship has been built in many areas, relationship between our institutions of higher learning, relationship, our diplomatic relationship, relationship between it, um, people to people, expanding trade, investment, manufacturing, entrepreneurship. And I'm very happy that later this year, in December, we will be having a summit, a Kenya-German summit in Nairobi, again, to discuss opportunities for expanding our cooperation between Kenya and Germany. Kenya is a green energy destination. Our grid is 93% renewable. So if you are looking for a destination to decarbonize some of your manufacturing, some of your um, undertakings, you have no better place than in Kenya. And just for context, we have just signed a, an agreement when I visited the United States with Microsoft and G42 of UAE for an investment of $1 billion to develop the first ever green data center in Kenya using uh, technology from the US 
And I'm really looking forward that we can expand that opportunity to technology from Germany, some of the investment resources from the UAE, and of course, using Kenya's renewable energy. There are exciting opportunities for German companies, both in the manufacturing space, but much more importantly, in the digital space. Kenya has one of the best human capital resource anywhere in the world. Innovative, creative, hardworking, least supervised. That's what you get when you work with Kenyan human capital. And that's available in Kenya, and we can also export it to Germany. That's number one. Number two is that Kenya has a fiscal and incentive ecosystem in our special economic zones, in our export promotion zones, that gives incentives both in taxes and in other incentives that allows German enterprises and other enterprises to thrive and to work in a space where they can remit their profits without challenge and they can work in Kenya without unnecessary impediment. Number three is that we are the gateway to Africa. Kenya is a signatory to the East African Community Framework that has 330 million people. We are signatories uh, to the tripartite agreement that brings together 26 countries with a population of 750 million people. And Kenya is a signatory to Africa Continental Free Trade Area that opens the African market of 1.4 billion people to your investment in Kenya. As we focus on its potential, we must take note of Kenya's really remarkable digital transformation. Often referred to as a Silicon savanna, Kenya has emerged as a leading hub of innovation in Africa. And this progress, I think, is a direct result of Kenya's forward-thinking policies and an investment in digital skills. This has positioned the country as a leader of digital talent in Africa. Today, businesses around the world are increasingly taking note of Kenya's skilled workforce, and many are already tapping into it. So now is an opportune moment for the German economy to intensify its relationship with Kenya businesses. And as you know, with the rapid digitalization of economies comes the challenge of ensuring that we have the right talents to support and sustain the growth we have. The growing demand of skilled workers in Germany, particularly in the tech industry, presents an opportunity for collaboration with countries like Kenya, which boosts a young, educated workforce ready to contribute to remote work. The Kenyan digital economy, with its flourishing sectors such as IT services, software development and customer support, offers unique opportunities for German businesses. Leveraging Kenya's highly skilled professionals through businesses process outsourcing addresses the pressing labor shortage that we have here in Germany. And it also fosters economic growth and innovation on both sides. Similarly, we will continue to provide platform for exchange and collaboration within the Kenyan-German digital dialogue.
Okay. Your Excellency President Dr. Frank Stamer and First Lady, enjoy the festival and God bless you. Thank you for having us. Let's enjoy the festive. Thank you. Hello, Mariaco. 
Boys here, we got bonus in the house. Hey.
This year's event coincides with the 60th anniversary of Kenya-German diplomatic relations, which have laid the firm foundation for us to anchor our enduring friendship, which, as I have pointed out, goes back close to 180 years. We are delighted to have this opportunity here at Velabu Palace of showcasing our culture, whose diversity has been the foundation of our nation's resilience innovativeness, and dynamism. Kenya is a land of extraordinary cultural richness, a tapestry woven from the unique threads from over 40 distinct ethnic communities which live in harmony in a land of equally breathtaking geographical diversity. If you travel across 800 kilometers across Kenya, from the west to the east, you will see Africa's largest and the world's second largest freshwater lake in Lake Victoria. And its beautiful catchment basin ascend the western escarpments of the Great Rift Valley up to our lush and forested western islands. Witness the magical sights of Rift Valley with its lakes and volcanic mountains. As you ascend in eastern escarpment, you will be privileged to behold Mount Kenya in its towering majesty. Before descending through Kenya's bobab strewn eastern plains, the Nika or Plateau to the sandy beaches of our Indian Ocean. On this journey, you will experience equally spectacular variety of natural fauna and flora. And if you venture northwards, you will find the Jalbi Desert, the surrounding arid and semi-arid rangelands while venturing southwards will take you to the grasslands of the Savo and the Mara, which teem with very big game. Through tolerant, harmonious interaction, every community contributes to the strength of our national unity. Through unique tradition, language, and customs, creating the vibrant mosaic that defines our national identity. From the Maasai warriors of the savannah, to the Swahili, our diversity literally represents our collective strength as a nation. <laughs> Citizens of the Republic of Germany, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jambo. <laughs> Guten Abend. I bring you warm greetings from the people of Kenya, with whom the German people have had continuous relationship for close to 180 years, where our two nations have enjoyed diplomatic ties. Dr. John Ludwig Graf and the Reverend Johannes Rebmann were the first Europeans, in fact Germans, to explore Kenya's deep interior and experience the splendor of Africa's second highest peak, the majestic snow-capped Mount Kenya. Since then, we have never looked back, and the people of Kenya and Germany have done much and achieved a lot together. Allow me to say that Germany became the first country in the world to recognize Kenya's independence, for which we are grateful. Today, again, Germany is making another historic feat, that Kenya becomes the first country outside Europe, first non-European country, to be invited as the partner country in the Citizen Festival here in Germany, for which again we are grateful.
It is therefore a delightful privilege to be with you today as we celebrate values which define people, culture, the spirit of volunteerism and community at this annual Citizens Festival. I thank the people and government of Germany, the President and the First Lady for inviting us to be part of this festival and for welcoming us so warmly and for making it possible for Kenya to participate in this year as profile partner country. We are honored by this acknowledgement of deep and strong bonds and our shared recognition that culture is a powerful means of promoting unity and deepening understanding among diverse people. Both Kenya and Germany are incredibly diverse nations, which from the earliest days recognized the imperative of national unity that transcends differences and harnesses diversity to generate the driving force of progress in every field of national endeavor. Our partnerships across numerous sectors testify to the power of culture in defining a people's development trajectory and the first opportunities that are created through partnership, collaboration, and cooperation. This is why Pamoja, together, is such a potent expression when applied to human endeavor. Everything in the world becomes easier in direct proportion to the degree in which we do it together. Dr. Kraft wrote the first German Kiswahili dictionary. In Kiswahili, together is Pamoja. I thank you for the inspired theme of this year's festival, which clearly describes its essence in terms of the shared values that bind our nations and peoples, and which our global community needs now more than ever. Pamoja, stronger together, invites us to appreciate the power, richness, and possibilities which diversity brings to the table and reminds us that in the age of globalization, the ability to embrace our differences increasingly determines our capacity to grow, compete, and succeed. Kenya, like Germany, is enriched by its diversity. We firmly believe in the enduring power of culture to deepen national unity and sovereignty, enhance regional and international cooperation, foster, foster multiculturalism, and promote peaceful coexistence throughout the world. Kenya is committed to deploying the power of cultural diplomacy to facilitate dialogue and solidarity within and between countries. Our engagement in this respect promote our rich culture and also fosters collaboration with other nations. Kenya also recognizes cultural diversity as a key driver of sustainable development. We believe that we all share the responsibility to cultivate a global environment where cultural dialogue thrives, paving the way for a more inclusive and a more harmonious world. As we commemorate 60 years of our diplomatic relations, we are reminded that our cultural heritage is not merely a relic of the past, but a living, breathing part of our daily existence. Our heritage is also the bedrock of our identity and a firm foundation upon which we build a future that respects the positive legacies of our past while embracing the promise of our future. Kenya. <clears throat> Kenya is a unique place in the history of human fossil rich sites like Turkana and the Great Rift Valley, which have provided invaluable insights into the origins of our species. These discoveries remind us that despite our diverse backgrounds, we all share a common ancestry. Archaeological and other scientific authorities have converged on the robust consensus that the East African savanna was the place where the ancestors of modern humans 
first lived. In particular, Lake Turkana Basin has been identified as the site where the first modern human being lived, leading scientists to label it as the cradle of humankind. One of the highlights of Kenya's exhibition in this celebration is the Turkana boy, a 1.6 million year old nearly complete skeleton of Homo erectus. Studied by scientists worldwide, this discovery has enabled humanity to obtain valuable information about our forebearers. There is no doubt, therefore, that Kenya is the very first home of the very first human being to walk on this earth. <clears throat> we are proud, therefore, to welcome all people throughout the world back home, because in every sense, Kenya is the home of humanity. In a world that is frequently pulled apart by impulses of fragmentation and polarization, gatherings like the annual Citizens Festival here are a powerful reminder that humanity has another way, a better way of facing the future. This festival shows that we can unlock infinite possibilities through collaboration. This is the message underscored by the diverse range of activities, including music, creative performances, and roundtable discussions, which reflect the promise in the inclusivity and dynamism of our communities, the promise of a bilateral community, and the grander possibilities in the universal community of humanity. I encourage us to celebrate humanity, community, culture, and diversity in this festival and to reflect every day on how we can play a role in promoting the spirit of philanthropy. Let us create more opportunities for people to get involved and contribute our part in ensuring that the voices of volunteers are heard, shared, and valued. This is the best way to build a more inclusive and compassionate society. As we enjoy the festivities, let us remember that the spirit of Pamoja does not end here. It is a call to action, a reminder that we are all part of something greater than ourselves. As members of one global family, our destinies are intertwined. What matters to any one of us matters to every one of us. Our future, the future of our planet and of humanity depends on our ability to recognize our common interest and the power we give ourselves when we stand together and act as one. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, First Lady, if we commit to go forward together, I am confident that the next chapter of Kenya-German collaboration will be even more inspiring. Let us move into the future as one, propelled by the power of our unity, the strength of our diversity, and the common aspirations, because Pamoja, stronger together, we are unstoppable. Thank you very much. Enjoy the festival and God bless you.
Kenya, uh, Minister for uh, Labour. Antifesa will sign for the Republic of Kenya, the Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs and Diaspora, His Excellency Dr. Musalja Mudavali. Thank you. We have established bilateral relations between our two countries, diplomatic relations that have flourished, and today we stand on a very solid foundation of firm, cordial, beneficial relations between our two countries. Today we celebrate the signing of this comprehensive migration and labor mobility partnership agreement that will provide a context for expanding the relationship between our two countries, the people-to-people -people relationship, and for giving us an opportunity to unlock the potential in technology in Germany and hum human capital in Kenya, where we have a big youth bunch, educated, innovative, hardworking young people who, working in collaboration with Germany, we can combine the innovation, creativity, energy, talent, knowledge of our young people with German investment, technology, and resources, and provide for a win-win outcome. I'm very excited that uh, we have today signed off this agreement that will give an opportunity for Kenyan young people and Kenyan people to work in Germany, and with it, as you have said, Chancellor, provides also an opportunity for those who will have finished their dual duty or who don't have to be in Germany for them to find their way back at home. Let me also commend Germany for their belief in Kenya and their belief in our continent. You supported the participation of Africa in the G20. I have just briefed Chancellor Scholz that um, we are undertaking a comprehensive reform of the institution of the Africa Union so that we can make it much more fit for purpose and we can align it with the requirements and the dictates of this century so that the Africa Union can represent Africa much more effectively, can provide a mechanism for the world to help us support and intervene in situations of instability in our continent, but also provide a framework for the huge opportunities that exist in Africa, from renewable energy to natural uh, mineral resources to our huge human capital resources and to the 1.4 billion African market for us to be able to do business together. I have um, briefed my good brother, Chancellor Scholz, um, that Africa is ready, Kenya is available for us to work together to forge um, a better world. Let me underscore, as Kenya, there couldn't have been a better destination for German investment and German business and German trade than Kenya. And I'm going to give you only three reasons why. 
we have some of the best human capital resources anywhere in the world. And German companies, numbering about 120 in Kenya, will speak for us. Number two, we have established a business framework, an investment framework, a trade framework, with our special economic zones, export processing zones, to make sure that we create the necessary environment to encourage business, investment, and trade. And also, as um, you all know, 93% of our grid is renewable energy. If you're looking for a destination to decarbonize some of your industrialization, the destination is Kenya. We intend to make our grid 100% green by 2030. And we will be partnering with Germany as you establish the hydrogen facility and office in Nairobi for us to use German technology, German expertise to unlock our renewable energy resources that would help us produce fertilizer and other green products, including iron, and steel, and I want to invite Germany to join the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative that brings together now 11 countries in Africa for us to combine the available resources, opportunities in Europe with the resources available in Africa. The agreement we've signed today, we've witnessed the signing today is a very important agreement. We've negotiated this agreement uh, over the last one year. All factors necessary for ensuring that this agreement benefits Kenya as much as it does Germany have been taken into account. It covers an array of areas. It is not limited to any particular area. All skills that are developed in our technical vocational uh, institutions which, by the way, mirrors to a great extent the technical education here in Germany. And part of the agreement that we have made in this uh, partnership is to twin and to provide mechanisms for ensuring that qualifications from institutions in Kenya mirror qualifications in institutions in Germany so that there is ease of um, transfer of skills and labor into uh, the job market. Let me also underscore that part, as part of this package, uh, we will explore opportunities of uh, the German language also being um, expanded in reach in Kenya to provide for ease of communication as we build this ecosystem of relationship and partnership. And finally, as to whether this will affect our industrialization agenda in Kenya, I want to assure you that um, we have skills, we have developed a huge human capital. As you may be aware, Kenya is a young country. I think our median age is uh, 19 and a half, maybe 20. So we have a huge um, uh, bulge of young people. Uh, if I give you an example, yesterday we advertised for uh, some opportunities in Kenya we require 20,000 people, 140,000 people applied. So that tells you we have a huge uh, young population that not only can satisfy our industrialization agenda in Kenya, but can be made available to industrialization here in Germany. And therefore, there is no risk whatsoever as to the migration of labor into Germany undermining our own uh, industrialization and progress. In fact, it will provide an avenue for us to tap into the skills in this, uh, in this country, the technology in this country, and create a better people-to-people -people relationship. An organization that speaks for democracy, that speaks for representation, cannot continue to be in its current form, where a continent of 1.4 billion people has no voice and cannot be seen. It has been our position 
as Africa, that the representation of Africa in the UN Security Council is an overdue attempt. It was a conversation that I had with President Biden when I had a state visit to the United States, and I am immensely grateful that the U.S. has now proposed two Security Council seats for Africa. I know you've asked me which countries will be sitting. It's going to be a decision for us. When the two seats become available, we will have a conversation as a continent as to how we want to be represented. I want to uh, thank Chancellor Scholz for his support for representation of Africa in the most important global institution, the United Nations Security Council. It is untenable to continue the United Nations Security Council in its current form. And therefore, it's a welcome development, and I want to ask the rest of the United Nations Security Council members to support the proposition that has been made. The links between our two countries are very good. Kenya and Germany have been working together in many areas, and we are expanding this cooperation continuously. This year, we are treading new ground with additional cooperative projects. I am delighted that we are intensively cooperating on green hydrogen, a true technology of the future. Another important joint ambition for both of us is cooperating more closely in the area of migration. As we have seen right now, the Federal Minister of the Interior, Nancy Fisa, State Minister Katja Coyle, and Foreign Minister Mudavadi have signed an agreement on this topic of a mobility partnership, and I think that is a very important agreement. It offers new prospects for Kenyan men and women because skilled workers and young trainees can come to Germany. It can help us to bridge the severe shortage of skilled labor. And the first impacts, of course, are already being felt. And we see that there is this uh, shortage that we need to address. At the same time, this agreement also addresses the other side of the coin, that is, effective repatriation procedures for those who have come from Kenya but have no right to stay in Germany. It is now easier to, for them to return to their home country. In the economic area, we're also making progress. The European Union that is competent for this issue and Kenya have concluded a partnership agreement. This way, companies from Kenya get better access to the European market and are integrated into fair and sustainable supply chains. Kenya is also benefiting from this as one of the biggest economies in Sub-Saharan Africa and a pioneer in digitalization. And for German companies who are already very present in the region, Kenya is becoming an ever more attractive partner. One question that is especially relevant for the future is where Kenya is a true leader already. More than 90% of its electricity is generated from re renewable energy sources. This makes Kenya a climate champion. During my visit last year, I was able to visit a very impressive geothermal power plant. For its future development, Kenya will need much more electricity. And the country stands firm on the path it has chosen. It counts on non-fossil fuels. And with the Climate and Development Partnership that we have concluded in 2022, we are supporting them on that path. Kenya's strong commitment to climate action is an inspiration for other countries as well, and that is important for the upcoming COP in Baku. Kenya also assumes a very important role in stabilizing the Horn of Africa. Kenya is engaging in many ways to address crises in the region and overcome these crises. One example is the most recent initiative for dialogue in South Sudan. And it is obvious, African-led initiatives for peace and stability in Africa will become even more relevant in the future. And the same, and it's also obvious that Africa needs to be represented more strongly in international institutions. An important step in this direction was, and I was delighted to see that, that the African Union has become a member of the G20. Germany was very happy to support that decision. I'm also delighted to see that Kenya is interested in joining the G20 compact with Africa. 
and developing it further. This is a good decision and we are very happy to provide practical cooperation and intensifying it.